I insist that if people understood the connection between Austrian economics and uh, IBC, then people want to buy life insurance they'll never see you guys. They'd buy it out of vending machines. But they don't understand life insurance. And the same moment, I got to tell you, if there's anybody who has absolute job security, it's you. People are lazy. That's against human nature for them to study this sort of stuff. When I wrote this book, Becoming Your Own Banker, 13 years ago, if you had to try to explain to me back then what I'm looking at today, there's no way I would believe it. Thank you for what you are and what you do. Because without you out there explaining this concept to your clients and prospects, we'd be nothing. Yours is the most important part of it all. I just happened to be uh, lucky enough to uh, produce the, uh, the item. Back in my career with life insurance uh, business, I spent uh, 23 years with Equitable, 12 years with Guardian. I clearly saw that the life insurance industry is not doing an adequate job of explaining their stuff. They're looking at things backward. It's evident that uh, life insurance companies have got to lend money. It's also evident to me that your need for finance during your lifetime is huge. And if you solve your need for finance through this marvelous vehicle, you've got to put up so much life insurance you can't get past the underwriters. Now, I never understood why the insurance industry never saw that because it was always there. So that's my contribution to the whole formula. That's all there is to it. It's not complicated at all. The book has uh, sold about 250,000 copies now. It's in 27 countries besides the United States, but mostly it's all because of you. You folks have been our primary means of getting the word out. Now, I wrote the book for your clients and prospects. I did not write it for you. But you need to understand it up one side and down the other and practice it within your own life, of course. Uh, how can you uh, explain something that you don't participate in yourself? Well, that's the reason that we came up with the idea of the uh, practitioner's program because the practitioner's program is designed specifically for you as uh, producers. There are certain things that are not in becoming your own book and uh, becoming your own banker. And so I saw the necessity of writing a new book uh, building your warehouse of wealth. I hope you understand the reason for this book. It has a long title, remember? Building Your Warehouse of Wealth. That part of the title came from David Stearns. That's how banking started out. They were warehousing their gold, etc., silver, whatever. The subtitle, A Grassroots Method of Avoiding Fractional Reserve Banking. Now, that came from my son, Dr. Barry Nash. He's been studying Austrian economics uh, all of his life because I guess I force-fed him. <laughs> and he saw clearly that uh, this is what this is all about, that people have been fed nonsense by screwball thinking in the economic world. And only the Austrians have got it right. The uh, Keynesians have painted the entire world in the darndest predicament of all time. And the Chicago folks aren't all that much better. Only the Austrians have got it right. Ludwig von Mises and uh, folks like that have said the uh, central banks increase the money supply big time. People think they have something, and they don't. It's all an illusion. And so it always comes crashing down. Well, that's what happens when you have central thinking. If the banking function was held entirely by the U and B level and your clients and prospects, it's impossible for you to have booms and crashes. And so that's what Barry saw when he said in your new book, we were coming up with a title for it. This is a grassroots method of avoiding fractional reserve banking. Don't play their game. Yeah. Don't play the, that game. You simply contract with like-minded people to solve an economic problem. That's all a life insurance is. 
Now, the sub-subtitle is Think About It. Now, that comes from me. All this uh, book is about how you think. And you have read it. Remember, I early in the book pointed out that uh, Alva Edison said 5% of the people think. 10% think they think. 85% would rather die than think. And my mentor, Leonard Reed, uh, told me his quotation was uh, that most people consider their thinking when really all they're doing is rearranging their prejudices. <laughs> And he also observed that uh, Edison was probably exaggerating when he said 5% of the people think. But if we think, there's a totally different world out there for us. And so that's the reason that I came up with a book. Now, there are certain things that I put into it that are not in BYOB, and all of you have been through my course. You've seen my story about the state farm policy that I bought back in 1959. Now, uh, that policy is older than a lot of you in this room. That policy has been in existence about one-fourth the time that life insurance has been in existence. Now, I put that in there so that people could see history. You can't argue with history that this is not theory or some fantasy or projection of any kind. And I'm demonstrating in there how that uh, through that buildup of cash values out there, that you can use, uh, have ready access to that for opportunities that will come along. If you build a, a large pool of ready cash out there that you have access to immediately, opportunities will track you down. You don't need to look for opportunities. They will find you. Now, another section that I dwelled on big time was this whole idea of retirement. In BYOB, I devoted a couple of pages to it, but it dawned on me that I did not address the subject adequately at all. And so I devoted an entire chapter in the uh, new book about retirement. That has got to be the craziest idea that ever came along. It's the product of uh, socialist-type thinking. There's a little publication that we have in our uh, store, The Pension Idea by Paul Poirot, Foundation for Economic Education. Paul wrote that uh, the, uh, pension idea in 1950, and he proved conclusively back then there wasn't a way in the world the idea would work. Now, that had to do with government-type plans and so forth, and of course they won't work. But look, one of the ways of changing people's activities is change the word. So I suggest you use the word that I've adopted, passive income. And that income can last as long as you live because it's actuarially sound. It's fully funded. It's not fantasy. It's not a wild dream of any kind. And all these government programs, there's no way that they could work. Because I've told every last one of you that uh, back in 1976, I made the uh, observation in, that uh, government is going to steal the proceeds, or the, or the resources rather, of all the government tax-qualified plans. And that was because of my Austrian upbringing. Uh, I could see very plainly that down through history, whenever government programs of some kind come along with a... Uh, retirement plan, you build up uh, resources there, and that is too tempting for bureaucrats and uh, politicians. They will steal it. Now, the reason I saw it at that particular time, 1976 or thereabout, was because somewhere along about that time frame, Brazil went out in the boonies and built a new capital city, Brasilia. Where did they get the money to build that thing, huh? They stole the reserves on the pension plans, that's all. Well, country after country has done that same thing. So getting money out of that sort of stuff and put it into free contract with other free people, in those locations, that is the most vulnerable thing that you can do. Free contract with other free people, I don't think they're going to do that. If they do, there'll be some rebellion out there. See, this is the law of contracts. 
Now, you go messing with the law of contracts, you just undid civilization, okay? For instance, my wife and I have been married for uh, 60 and a half years now. We formed a contract August the 16th of 1952. Don't y'all mess with that contract, okay? If you want to mess with that contract, we're going to have a war on our hands between me and you. Well, the same goes for everything else out there. So change the way you think about that sort of thing. And again, adopt the word passive income. I don't mind that. And every uh, illustration, again, uh, I'm showing passive income that won't disappear and still delivers a significant death benefit to the next generation so they don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't know why certain ideas get established in people's minds that you are independent business people. You run your business the way you want to run it. We're not out there to control how you think or how you do your business. We're just raising a standard here, and you are the one who makes the judgment. You are saying, I adopt this ideal. That is all. How you conduct your uh, practice, what you sell and so forth, that's none of our business. But, you see, we run into this kind of thing. I'm not going to tell you who or where. All the thought process that was the roots of becoming your own banker came from my Austrian upbringing. A year ago, or maybe two years ago, Carlos held up this book and said, only an Austrian could have written this book. And that's true. See, it all has to do with the way you think. I got out of the Air Force in uh, 1954, went to work in eastern North Carolina, and frankly, I didn't know a thing about socialism. Inherently, I knew something was wrong. We were on a quarter system at University of Georgia when I was there. Winter quarter of my senior year, I made five A's and a C. The C was in forest policy, taught by the dean. All about government programs of some kind or another. I knew something was wrong. But when I got out of uh, the Air Force and went to work, I came face to face with the mental paralysis that socialism causes. I could not believe my eyes. Why do people behave this way? I'm mouthing off at a social gathering uh, at the home of a radiologist, and the radiologist uh, says, sounds like you need to read this book. Went back to his library, got Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson. Read this. Ten days or so after that, I took it back to him. I says, well, I have two questions. Where you guys been hiding this stuff? Now, why'd y'all hide it from me? He says, well, if you like what you read, get on this mailing list for this journal called The Freeman, put out by the Foundation for Economic Education. Says, now, all you got to do is ask for it. Now, the more I read, the better it got. I was particularly attracted to uh, the writings of Leonard E. Reed, R-E-A-D. Down through the years, Leonard Reed became my mentor. By the grace of God, I was there when Leonard died in 1983. There are 100 charter members of the Leonard E. Reed Society. I have the privilege of being one of those 100. Now, it was because of that background that the thought processes that I learned there that ultimately ended up with uh, becoming your own biker. Now, one of my real frustrations down through the years has been I saw clearly the uh, connection between infinite banking concept and uh, the Austrian school of thought. And, of course, I've thrown a lot of money at uh, the efforts of uh, various Austrian organizations. But the granddaddy of them all is Foundation for Economic Education. That's where it all started. You see, when Ludwig von Mises left Vienna at the beginning of World War II, he was high on the hit list of the Nazis. Among other things, he was Jewish. But the real reason they were after him was because 
he could explain away the nonsense of socialism so effectively, they won't get rid of this guy. And so Margaret and uh, uh, Ludwig put whatever they could in suitcases and went to uh, Switzerland. Now, they were still after him, and he didn't want to uh, be uh, thrown in the side of the uh, Swiss, so he comes to America. His point of contact in America was Henry Hazlitt, Foundation for Economic Education. Now, the driving force that really created uh, Foundation for Economic Education was my mentor, Leonard Reed. And so being able to find someone that will be uh, willing to uh, take a look at what we're doing is extremely important. And uh, that's why we're so honored to have a person like uh, Bob uh, Murphy here on our efforts. You have no idea how, what respect this guy has in the economic world. I'm convinced that he's the most published Austrian economist out there today, period. And so having him fully understanding what we're talking about is great. Well, we're not a sales organization. You know that. We're an educational organization. That's it. I insist that if people understood the connection between Austrian economics and uh, IBC, then people want to buy life insurance they would never see you guys. They'd buy it out of vending machines. But they don't understand life insurance. And the same moment, I got to tell you, if there's anybody who has absolute job security, it's you. People are lazy. That's against human nature for them to study this sort of stuff. And so you've got to uh, persuade them to uh, look deeply into all this and how you can avoid these ups and downs in life and what creates such problem that when you control the banking function out there, you've removed a huge element of stress in everybody's life. Because if you go out there and analyze it, you'll find that money is at the roots of practically all of it. That this is stress-free compared with everybody else. 